KCM Wealth Management. Vancouver Lawyers, Dumoulin Boscovich. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. David and Mark Goodman. Jeff Plant is uh, back in private practice these days. He's a lawyer, but for many years he was one of the uh, chief lawmakers uh, and uh, I guess chief police. Uh, he was the attorney general of the province of British Columbia, among other uh, many contributions. Spent a lot of time working on uh, Aboriginal files and making a good contribution there as well. But we are talking today, Jeff, about casinos. I, I started to ask you something during the break, and, and you're very gracious in, in agreeing to, to answer it on camera. Um, there are not many, but there are people in government, uh, elected people in government, that, that I like and I admire. There aren't a lot of them. And I often wonder, do folks like you, you're one of them, and, and there's a few others, do, do you, when you were in government, did you have to hold your nose every couple of months and, or sort of grit your teeth and blink and look the other way? No, not really. I mean, the part of our process, of our political system that is, is kind of, it's genius, but also a problem, is that the cabinet, and to some extent the caucus, but the cabinet is a place where great debates happen. Yes. And then when the debate is over, a decision is made, um, you go out. Our system requires you go out and speak with one voice. But necessarily that means almost every decision that government makes is a bit of a trade, you know, it's a bit of a compromise, it's a bit of a give and take because there are different perspectives around the table. And what you do is you try and ground yourself according to your principles. You look at what it was you promised the voters that you would do, and you test each decision against those uh, those guides, you know, guide stars. Yeah, every once in a while you do something that you don't particularly wouldn't do if you were all by yourself. But for the good of the whole enterprise, you support. But you're in this team. odd position because you're tied. You're like a dray horse, and you're tied to the team. And meanwhile, one of the other horses. Uh, especially the lead horse, uh, does something that that you might find distasteful or peculiar. Yeah. Well, there's a remedy in our system, and frankly, it's not used that often, but what you is leave. It? You, you quit. Oh, you leave. Yeah. And that's, that is the way the system's designed. And yes. I'm, in fact, that didn't happen yes. um, uh, for me because I felt comfortable that on the whole, you know, the, as a group, we were always moving in the right direction, even though there were... I don't, listen, I'll tell you, there's a bill that I introduced that I am responsible for, yes. that I am famous for, that I yeah. did not support. But I thought it was... You introduced it, but you didn't support it. Personally. But the team decided we wanted to do it. And, I mean, it was, it was just a public policy debate, yeah, not yeah, an yeah. integrity issue. It was yeah, just yeah, I didn't yeah. think this was the right way to solve a problem. Yeah. Okay. The team decided to do it. Um, we work as a team, so I, I gave as articulate a defense. Uh, and, by the way, it turned out I was wrong politically. The yeah. bill was very popular. You were looking for a base hit, and someone said, no, we're going to bunt. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going for the field goal. <laughs> All right, let's go back to casinos. Yeah. Uh, the RCMP... Uh, has kind of spooked us all for many reasons these days, but recently they've said about casinos, we believe that money laundering is going on. You can't have any other conclusion when pe folks walk in with suitcases filled with $120,000 in cash, where it, you know, it's, you know, and then they cash them in on, on chips and then they go walk away with real money or other money, right. you know. I, my understanding, Jeff, is that the law all across Canada is the same with regard to uh, uh, oversight uh, on casinos, but the, the, the accusation is that Rich Coleman and or this government uh, uh, is not, are not following through. 
Well, I don't, I mean, frankly, I doubt that. Rich is an uh, absolutely first class uh, minister. I mean, the point is that to go back to where we started, the nature of the enterprise invites these problems, whether it's money yes. laundering or prostitution or yep. who knows what. So you better be vigilant. Um, yep. And we do have good processes in place as long as they're adequately resourced. And you know, if the RCMP need more resources for this purpose, we better make sure they have them. Um, I, you know, I read allegations in the newspaper, and I, I know what to believe about I, what I read in the newspaper. Well, what's, the what's, time, what's so. your sense about uh, the ICMP blowing that kind of a whistle? You, you think there's some some fire behind the smoke? I, I do. I well, well I, there yeah. could be fear yeah. and worry and a desire to use the court of public opinion to help place pressure on government to free up the resources to uh, address those priorities. The police are masters at yes. using the court of public opinion as a way of influencing well, and they, and they often have to, decisions. that's fine. Well, I, I Lots mean, of people I do wish that. that you know, we were all as good at that as they are, but uh, they <laughs> yeah. are good at it. And if there is money laundering going on, loan sharking can only be a step behind, and yet I, I see very little of that reported in the media. Yeah, I, and again, I mean, these, uh, I don't, I'm not privy to, you know, what the details of uh, life uh, are like for inside law enforcement agencies or inside government. Um, it's good that we be reminded of these issues. It's good be, that we be reminded of these concerns. And I actually think we should be informed by them to be cautious about continuing to expand this enterprise. Yes. Um, but uh, I also have confidence that we can you know, do a reasonably good job of, of maintaining the integrity of what we've got if we're diligent. If I were in the loan sharking business, and I'm not, uh, I would uh, want to hang around casinos or I'd want to send uh, lovely women uh, as my uh, lieutenants to hang around casinos because I think I'd get some good business in a place like that. Well, what we know about... Seems like uh, a kind of natural about, venue. Well, what we know yeah. about gambling is yes. that um, there are some people who can't manage it. It's highly addictive for some folks. Yeah. And that addiction breeds vulnerability, and that vulnerability is what opens up the world of opportunity for loan sharks, for all kinds of predatory folks. Um, this is why I am kind of ambivalent about the whole exercise. Why would you deliberately set out to expand an enterprise that has as one of its a absolutely uh, necessary byproducts a significant, you know, who knows what the numbers are. In fact, the research is unclear about just how prevalent problem gaming is, but there's problem gaming, and with it, all kinds of harm to families, to health, of to course. societies. And there's even a really interesting debate about whether the upside in terms of benefit yes. is actually a net gain to society as a whole because of the downside in terms of lost hours to work, harm to families. Uh, yeah, gamblers extra, Anonymous. There's a reason there's a thing called Gamblers Anonymous. Well, and extra yeah. dollars for law enforcement to deal with problems that we have deliberately created a framework and when you, to permit. And when you look at you know a gift, a so-called gift of $200,000 being set aside for, to deal with those kinds of social problems as compared to the many hundreds of millions that gambling uh, results in, it's kind of a, it's almost an insult. It doesn't feel like we're, we, we never are very good at allocating out of public resources the dollars that we should for prevention and treatment of these kinds of social consequence okay. problems. Now, let, let, let's go to allocating some of these funds in a different way. As, as, as we all know, uh, uh, monies from lotteries and from gambling, uh, some portion of those monies are given to British Columbia charities of one kind or another, to nonprofits. They could be arts groups, they could be social service groups, and so on. To put a, 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 a face on the picture, a recent story came out about a women's shelter in Kelowna. Here's a place that deals with women who are being abused by their spouses, who have, uh, you know, alcohol and drug problems. Whatever the case may be, they're single parents, they're struggling with being parents. This entire operation, Jeff Plant, operates on about 100 grand a year. That's lunch money, okay? Lunch for a government, that's lunch money. Their current uh, gift from, from gambling was in the 50,000 range. They were getting about half their funds from the government. That was just cut down to 27,000. How can we in any conscience take these hundreds of millions of dollars from this somewhat questionable activity, an activity that often preys on weakness, on human weakness, and, and we, although we could argue lots of things do, 
and only give $27,000 to a women's shelter in Kelowna. Come on. Yeah, well, it's bad public policy. I mean, surely. Good, I'm really glad well, to hear you I say mean, that. Surely, yeah. if there's a public good being met by a program that yes. is, you know, kind of aligned with what we might all agree is a critically important function of yes. government, then the program should make its case for public funding. The public funding should be established. It should be routinized. It should be hardwired so the people running the agency. Um, don't have to depend on you know the accident of how many gamblers there were last week or a treasury board decision about how much revenue to spring spring fr uh, free from this particular thing it should be look you do good work we're going to give you seventy five thousand dollars a year and you don't have to fill out an application form for gaming money okay and you and being the sharp uh, chisel that you are you hit the nail on the head once again McMartin, in a different article, did a marvelous piece in which he said, charities move to Alberta. Because Alberta has a system that you just described, which is, this is what you'll get, this is how it works year after year, unless you, you know, do something untoward and we have to cancel you. This is the deal. Whereas in BC, these people have to wait and hear every year and beg every year and so on. Well. To, uh, to defend my former yeah. colleagues for a moment, yes. over the last decade, there's been actually some improvement made in relation to these things. For example, uh, parent advisory committees at yes. schools used to have to you know, uh, argue about $200 or $800 or this, yes. and there's been some standardization of yes. the way in which funds are dispersed. That still doesn't um, get over the problem that it's all kind of conditional grant money exactly. as opposed to being regularized public expenditure. Now, it's great, it's, yeah, let, me, let me remind you of something you said earlier in this discussion, because we can't forget I'm it. I'm sorry, it's, if you're no, going to no. remind me of things that I say, <laughs> I can't have you on the show as a guest. <laughs> okay. When you're inside government, <laughs> yes. everyone just wants more money. Of and course. there isn't enough money, and so yeah. it's a pretty challenging business to figure out where are you going to get the pu enough public resources to meet what is an ever-growing, sometimes infinite demand for services. And it's it, you know one thing to find a story about a really profoundly needy you know agency in Williams Lake. You and I could probably find four or five other uh, agencies. Yes, where of course. Quick, quick question: yes. How how do how do casinos fit into the picture of a civil city? You were you were uh, Mayor Sam's civil city commissioner for a little while. Well, I mean, I think that they are a necessary part of our fabric. The governments have made them a part of uh, how they do business, and, and people. There are people who get great joy out of gambling. Sure. So what you have to do is make sure that they're established with all the safeguards we've kind of canvassed uh, and put in place, and so that the neighborhood. You, I, 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 let me take a good example: the at the the Edgewater thing. Yes. The city council better do a really good job of talking to the neighbors. Yes. And listening to neighbors, because in a civil city, you actually listen to your neighbors. Great point, which And Jeff, great pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Great, Peter. great to have you here. Folks, we're going to continue with our exploration of uh, cities, and this city in particular. Uh, next week, Bob Ransford, uh, who's a communications and uh, land development consultant, and I always call him uh, Mr. Citizen. He's a great public citizen because he, he, he does tireless work for charities and so on. Anyway. He'll be our guest, and the question will be, how does our city grow? Uh, all of that coming up next week. Remind you again, davidburner.com if you want to get a hold of us or, or re-look at this again or look at past issues. We have archived all of our shows. Thank you so much for being uh, with us on David Burner on Shaw Community TV. <laughs> Good